at one of my favorite places of all time. And I am so excited. I haven't been here in like five years. I take that back three years. Uh, let me check it out here. Arizona. See the waterfall in the background there. Let's get it on. What's up, buddy? He looks back at us. <laughs> I want a donkey so badly. last time we were here. There's a couple bears. Yeah, I thought those were wolves, though. Uh, the section we just passed was wolves, but we didn't oh, see them. Oh, there were nine? Yeah, we didn't see them. Yeah, it was this pond here that last time we were here it oh, waved. Oh. Cute. Wow. It'll be in my view here in a second. Here we go. Dude, that one is big. <laughs> This one's the smaller of the two. He's chilling. Check out this one. Right here, yeah, this is this is where uh, the bear waved back at us. Last time we were here. Oh. <coughs> oh, there's another one up here. Well, he's all swimming away. That is so cute. Another one's about to get in the water. This ball day. Mm -hmm. Those ravens don't care. Mm Getting out to sea, though. <laughs> that was cool. Oh, it's crossing the road up here. 
Look at this one rubbing up against a tree. <laughs> his butt up against a tree. Yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah. Look at that. That's hilarious. Having a good old time. And they're over by the fence, too. Quite a few of them. That's hilarious. Just chilling. Yeah. Oh, sorry, guys. Oh, it's sorry. Good. Big yawn. Hugging this tree. <laughs> this log that's down. He's so cute. <laughs> yeah, he's adorable. I don't know, we might have misgendered him. Why do, why do <laughs> bears have to be aggressive? They're so adorable. I know. I know. Right? Baby bison. Creatures. Look at that big dude. Wow. Wow, this looks like a grandpa. Oh, look, one's rolling around back there. I saw it in my rear view mirror. See? No, I can't see it. I'm batting. That's one big dude. It's the pronghorn. That's what they are. There's a little dude right there. Pronghorn. <laughs> Wonder why they have the one fenced off. They're separate from the others. Big horn oh, long sheep. Almost fell. Did you see that? Try to get a better view. There we go. It's pretty amazing how they are climbers. Mm -hmm.
I believe they're related to goats, aren't they not? And then, uh, I know goats, they love to be at the highest point as possible. And they're also climbers and jumpers. See, there are bears. I knew there were more bears. Yeah, there's several spots of bears. I think you just say only that one. Some of the little bigger bears hiding behind the tree there. Oh, you can see them over. Those are the other bears that we drove by earlier. On the other side of the fence there. Snoring on the job. <laughs> Couple of them. Look at that. I can't look at it. Yeah. There we go. One right there in the den. Look, that's a good shot. And then there's one on top of this rock that's over here. Really nice. And this dude's just chilling. <laughs> You guys can see, but there's a bunch of them laying down in the back there. Oh, I see them back there. They're kind of hidden from the rocks and trunks. This guy is conked out. Okay, we just got done with the drive-through area of Arizona. It's kind of like a safari. You drive through and get to see the animals. Now this is actually the zoo part of Arizona. Here we go. Last time I was here, they were doing so much construction that I barely recognize this. Check these out right as we walk in. These are amazing. Look at that giant dream catcher. Wow, those are cool. Wow. Look at these with the wolves. Okay, there's a stage. I remember the stage here because there were some performers at the time. We're getting here right when they open, so I don't know if they have entertainers today or not. And it's during the week. Here's a map of the place. one of the eateries here. I love the log cabin feel, but they have uh, several restaurants here that you can get food. Let's get this in here. In case you guys want to check this place out. This 
place is a gym. Last time I was here, there was so much of these, um, so much of this area was under construction. This place has grown quite a bit. Trying to see if I can see the beavers. Yep. It kind of smells like armpits. <laughs> Not to lie. Uh, but I don't see them. Where are they? They might be behind the rock. Just little holes right there. We got here right as they open. Like a lot of the food places are not up yet. Um, but the animals are not awake yet. We got the porcupines. There we go. He's sleeping. And we got another one over here hanging out in the back. here this was all under construction a lot of these enclosures weren't uh, here they were being built wow these guys are beautiful Like small to medium sized dogs. They're adorable. What's up, buddy? Look at those claws, man. Wow. Back it up. <laughs> he just plopped down. He saw how quick he... That was funny. Small animals, birds, and reptiles they eat. Huh. Ooh, you can smell them. Arctic wolves. Yeah, it was like all of a sudden you hit a wall of stink. Yeah, they're adorable. That one just plopped down. Yeah, they definitely have that fox smell. There's a third one, right there. 
back there. Aww. He's yawning. These are adorable. Average height is only 12 inches, length 43 inches, weighs 6 to 12 pounds. Insect, rodents, fish, and berries they eat. I wonder if they're not white because they're, it's summertime right now, or if it's just a different type of breed. We even have uh, domesticated chickens here. Yep. Another one right here. This one blends in with the ground really well. Good self defense. I would definitely be worried about hawks and other large animals in northern Arizona going after your chickens. Along with the wolves and bears and other animals. I'm horrible at that. <laughs> horrible at it. Oh, they are they are open. They're just not out. They're all eating right now. See, it's open right there. See, you freaking bird. <laughs> okay, these are all over southern Arizona. Javelina. Uh, they're really popular uh, during the winter time there. They like to uh, feed on the jack-o'-lanterns that the people put outside. They love pumpkin. I see four of them. One's laying down, the other three are up. These are little guys. They're within a year. Uh, javelinas do not have good eyesight, but they have incredible good smell. Man, they will tear up your flowers and rose garden oh, in a heartbeat. An um, those somebody needs to talk to those squirrels. So part of their diet is eating cactus, small animals, and roots. <laughs> they don't look worried. Nah, those squirrels aren't scared of anything. As well, there. start digging. But yeah, sometimes um, they'll dig up nice deep holes, about I'd say a foot to five feet, and uh, they'll put frozen salmon underneath or clams, different things, mussels, different things like that that they might like. And they'll use those claws for digging, which is pretty cool. <laughs> That's so adorable. Um, he leans in to get his Shelby, ear rubbed. Uh, are you training one side and then in the future or sometime in the near future training for the other ear? Yeah, so I'm kind of training um, this ear to a certain level and then I'll try to do what we call generalizing and I'll generalize it to the other ear. That's my hope. Um, sometimes that works out for us. Sometimes it's almost like we have to start completely over and train the behavior from scratch. Wow just from the other side. But the hope, yes, is to get it so fluent on one ear, and then hopefully just once I teach him to turn his head the other way, the ear behavior will just generalize. So that's kind of the, that's the plan. That's a good question. Yeah, a lot of the training that they do is just small little steps. Like with the blood drop, they started off just training him to 
big constable putting his paw through this container, um, knowing that there's no restraints involved. So that was the first step, and then it turned into um, kind of training him to leave it in there for longer periods of time, so 10 to 15 minutes. And then it turned into kind of just messing with the fur as it was in there. Um, and then it turned into shaving fur, um, adding alcohol, different little things that took up quite a bit of time, but they're, they're pretty smart. They learned a lot of those trainings. Um, in a, within a couple of weeks, they understood what their keeper was asking of them. Um, for the Jaguars, it's probably taking like 20 years for a lot of their training. So these guys are very smart. He was upset she dropped it. Shelby, yes. So right now she's working with Crockett just specifically on this training session. Um, so sometimes they'll do that. We'll, we'll have another team we're working with like Hannah on doing a back, um, like a back paw protect kind of thing or leaning up against the fence, different things like that. Um, but they usually rotate out. It's usually a solid five. Uh, five keepers that kind of rotate between bears, but if they're working on something, they usually um, kind of make it known that they want to work with this bear specifically on something. Yeah. So for like the next few weeks, I'll probably work with Rocket more so than yeah. a lot of the other trainers since I'm the one training this behavior. But the next behavior would be Jordan or Nick working it, and then I might work something with one of the girls. Or Uh huh. Uh huh. He's like, give it to me now, Shelby. Um, I I don't know if they know their names necessarily. Um, I think a lot of times whenever we go out there and we have big buckets of food, um, they put it all together. Like she's saying, "Hey, bear!" really loud. So they're. Um, kind of used to eating at a certain time. These guys are the only bears that have uh, a set eating time. So they kind of, I guess, correlate the timing with uh, the volume of us saying, hey bear. And I think they recognize maybe Shelby or, or people that end up feeding them. I, I don't know. I know Norm, um, he's another master. I, I think he would say that they do know their name and that they do know him. But I don't know. I've said their names before and they kind of don't care. So I don't know. <laughs> it, yeah, exactly. Sometimes I'll call for one of them and they just don't care. But if Shelby comes over, they, they care. So it's, it's the hand that feeds them. They're so smart too. What's that stuff that she's feeding them right now? Yeah, so if you didn't hear earlier today, they do get split off into three different sections to eat their protein. It's always salmon and carnivore diet, so it's everything a cow has to offer, grounded up, organs, tissues, and all that good stuff. So right now, it's just pieces of salmon while she's working on. Uh, they do little things back here, aside from eating their protein, like an open mouth behavior, sticking their tongue out, putting their claws through the fence, standing up nice and straight, different things like that. She's currently working with him to do an ear present, so she's just pointing in one direction, um, and he's putting his ear up to the fence, that way she's able to kind of mess with it. This is just for future um, things like putting squat on their ears, because the flies like eating the tips of their ears, so this is just kind of prepping for that as well. Uh, they've learned other things back here, like voluntary injections, where they know how to give themselves their own shots, voluntary blood teeth. draws, where Crocky comes over here and they do a blood draw on him without any restraints. He just knows exactly what to do. <laughs> so they get to participate in a lot of their vet work. Um, but yeah, they're only about four years old, so he's eating 10 pounds of that protein. Um, Sky, or no, Hannah's in the middle over there. She's doing seven, Sky's doing six. And so they're all four years old. Um, they kind of range in different sizes, but crock is the biggest one, a little over is one of their protein, uh, just because it is a high value item and we don't want them to be here back here all day. They normally come back only for 30 minutes to an hour and that's when we utilize it to, to feed, their, feed them their protein. Um, but then they do 65 pounds of fruits and veggies throughout the day. So that gets put off into breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, and so they are the only ones that kind of have a set feeding time at 10.30 and then again at 4 o'clock and then midday is kind of just at random. Um, but they're the only ones that really have a set feeding time. So uh, 10 for Crockett, 6 for... 
guy, seven for Hannah in the middle there, and then 65 pounds of fruits and veggies. So this is just kind of going down. At their peak, Crockett was doing 15 pounds of protein, and Fimo were doing 14, and then 125 pounds of fruits and veggies a day. So um, they normally eat a lot more during the summertime. Um, they usually call it hyperphagia, which means preparation for winter. They eat a ton of food um, during the summer, but these guys don't go into full hibernation mode since they get fed every single day. So they still come out and hang out with us, but they eat a lot less during the winter. They're not as motivated. They don't move around as much. Um, and sometimes we don't even do any training sessions. So right now is the prime time to kind of do all those different little trainings with that. Just because they're not motivated to open their mouth or do anything like that. What do they eat? Uh, 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 normally, so these guys are considered silver tip and lemon berries. So they eat a lot. A lot of their food sources is within the state. So they get the stuff that's like could be roadkill, could be berries, could be things that they find out in the wild. Uh, and then you have your coastal berries that have more of the salmon, the good stuff that they have out in the ocean. So um, it really depends where they're located at. Um, yeah, usually for these guys specifically, they probably prioritize romaine lettuce and corn as like their top favorites. And then they go with oranges, apples, things like that. Um, they've recently been trying beets and um, squash and something else that they kind of put their nose up to and they're allowed to because they're going to order them exactly what they want with some beets added to it. They hate bananas. They hate... Um, they hate broccoli, um, they don't like chicken, they don't like deer, they don't like elk. Because um, for the first two years of their life, we got a real good deal on restaurant salad, salmon fillets. So that's kind of all they ate for the first two years. And so uh, whenever we get donations from Game and Fish, Roadkill, different things like that, they tend to put their nose up to it, but they love the hide. They love that smelly hide that an elk has. So they'll roll around in it. You'll probably see Crockett whenever he gets it, just fling it back and forth. So it's super cute, yes. Um, kind of. It's the, I think we have like five to six in this specific department and they get to work with all the walkthrough animals. So it's, it changes up every now and then unless they're working on a specific training yeah, session. So Shelby's going to work with Crockett on, on doing an ear present. Um, so she'll probably be hanging out with him for the next couple of weeks or so. But yeah, it usually rotates out every now and then. What do you think? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So an ear present uh, is pretty much him just putting his ear up to the fence and eventually this is just kind of the first step to that training session. Okay, we just saw the grizzly bears in a behind the scene feeding training session. So they're not out in their enclosure right now, but this is what it looks like. They've done a really nice job since the last time I was here. They were working on all of this. This place has grown so much. Bobcats, we see them all over. All over. Uh, we haven't been able to see them though. We were looking. This is their enclosure. <coughs> and I used to encounter these guys on the golf course. Look at the size of his paw. It's almost the size of his head. It's pretty amazing. Got the trash pandas. Raccoons. There's three of them. Try One dude's laying on his back. Having a good time. These guys always get a bad name because they get, they're known for giving, uh, getting rabies, but they're actually very decent animals. They're very curious animals that can get them in trouble. Oh wow, yeah, there's a bear. 
Oh, uh, check out that raccoon. Just hopped up there. <laughs> He's sticking out his teeth. <laughs> He's going to go way up there. He's way up there now. These are baby black bears. <laughs> He's like, you leave my stuff alone. He's eating food or something. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, the other one's eating on the carrot now. Black one gave it up. Oh. It's adorable. Juvenile black bears. They'll eventually go to the drive through area. what it says here, the 15 acres. So, body of a Gila monster. Yeah. Now they're everywhere in Southern, uh, I did it again, Southern Arizona. You don't want to get bit by one. They bite down and their jaws lock onto you. Even if you cut off their head, their head will stay, their jaws will stay locked onto you. Definitely don't want to get bit by them. These are salamanders. You can barely see them. There's one there, one there. Thing you see in the desert a lot it's tarantulas look at the size of that dude that's a big dude wake up with that thing crawling on you huh well, that's a cool new statue the bison all metal that's incredible man how long do you think it would take to make one of these? That's crazy. That's a lot of dedication there. Some of the humor here. This place is so well themed, man. I love what they've done here. And this is the otter exhibit here. We got a little dude here. 
Check out this. This is so great. It's a better angle. Otters are hanging out underneath. They have a great exhibit here. But they're hanging out in the corner. Oh, that was a wasp. They have a great exhibit here for them. The water is normally flowing here. I don't know why it's not flowing at the moment. Then they have this big old pool here. It's normally a lot cleaner. It's a great sign. And this buddy meets you at the... And there's a little guy. Here we go to the gift shop. kinds of different kids toys here great for the kids little plushies toys different merchandise for the kids to wear oh that's cool that is a really cool shirt. I like it. <laughs> uh, the bears, not this time, but last time we were here, they literally climbed on our car. There you go. A hairy, a hairy otter. There you go. They have all kinds of mugs, drinks, cups, stuffed animals. We also got different pictures. Salt and pepper holders. Those are cool. And puzzles. Jigsaw puzzles. Boy, that would be a fun one to do. That one's cool too. Pet stuff. They got it all in here. Books. This is the Jaguar exhibit. Right outside the restaurant. He is hidden in the corner. I'm gonna go downstairs and try to get a better look. Looks hungry. <laughs> yeah, he looks very hungry. He does. Giant size. It's a gorgeous environment for him. Let's go see if he'll eat us. He's getting a little riled up. You guys can try that if you want, but I uh, would. Ooh. He just wants a little pet pet. I bet he's so soft too. Yeah, I bet. Look at the size of his paws, man. Ooh. <laughs> it's so weird that there's glass there, but I'm still trying to touch the glass. <laughs> yeah, he is wound up. Yeah, he was cool and calm until you guys got here. Oh, he sees supper out here. Yeah. <laughs> Let's check out some elk. Been pretty close to elk before. Staying out with my friends. 
in the White Mountains of Arizona and came up right up to her window of her house. Okay. Oh, I got him feeding time. Look at that big dude right there. Oh wow, look at the dude at the end. Holy cow. Finished his food and took his. Yeah, I wouldn't mess with that dude either. Yeah, I feel like elk and deer and all those species have such expressive eyes. Yeah. Oh, they're gorgeous animals. It's all gone. These dudes are massive. Look at how much that weighs. The antlers. This one got booted from eating the uh, pellet, so he decided to come over and eat the alfalfa. And so now they kick their feet and their hooves while they eat. Wonder if that's because of the flies? That uh, could be. That would drive me nuts too. Okay. Don't know if you guys can hear that in the background, but that's thunder and lightning. Um, it's going to do it for our Bear Zona trip. Man, I love this place and it's changed so much since the last time I've been here. I, I, I highly recommend it to anybody, um, especially if you're an animal lover. Uh, if you guys can hit that thumbs up button, greatly appreciate it. If you uh, haven't subbed to my channel yet, greatly appreciate if you do. It helps out my channel greatly. Um, if you can leave a comment or two, let me know if you like this place or not. Um, if you've been here before, and what do you like about it? Um, and if you can share the link to anybody that's into this kind of content, I greatly appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one. Lots of love. Peace.